Tracy from Nova Scotia Living and today is a busy day. I have been canning all yesterday. You can see back there that's canned peas. I have stuff. I'm going to turn the camera around because I'm not very good at pointing in the background. So just hold on a second. I, I need to move in the back. I have, that's my tripod that doesn't work properly. I have a towel up there to tie my camera to it. I have corn in there. I, I have separate, I'll have separate videos for those folks if you want to see them. So just check out the links below. Uh, Miss Misha is home today. She usually has school, but they have some sort of an in-service today. So she's been asking to make cookies. I'm not going to film that because I think I already did a video on chocolate chip cookies. That's what she requested. It's this old book. I bought this off of eBay. And whoever had this before, it's worn and torn but I love it because whoever had it was certainly a baker and we we've, we've been making cookies out of that since I got it anyways yeah it's a loud kitchen here's Mr. Mays it's a loud kitchen but I'll bring you along just for the day and I I just want a little comfy company for making supper tonight so if you guys don't mind hanging out with me I'll bring you along it's ham and scallop potatoes and by chance we're having some canned peas to go along with it Alright guys, my corn in the pressure canner is almost done, so I thought I'd start on some of the vegetables for supper tonight. But yeah, I appreciate you guys tagging along while I make some supper. I just got done feeding the kids lunch. It's about a little, little after 1 o'clock today. And on busy days like this, yeah, I gave them a boxed craft dinner meal. Um, we don't eat that very often, but I have some, I always have a little bit in my pantry just for days like today. I don't have time to make a, well that's a lie. I didn't feel like making a whole homemade lunch today because I'm canning, I'm on a canning spree to be honest folks. And um, I'm gonna be making a good wholesome meal tonight for supper. So I put a, it's one of those picnic hams, I think I showed you guys. I put it in a slow cooker last night before I went to bed and put it on low. And I shut it off when I got up this morning or I, I put it on warm I didn't shut it off so it's still over there on warm I'm gonna take it over the slow cooker in a bit and cut the fat cap off of it and uh, then slice it up but to go along with um, ham is scallop potato mac and cheese is another great thing to use as a side dish when it comes to ham I find peas always go great with ham we're not big ham eaters we don't care for actual ham a whole lot we like it because we only have it every once in a while. I always cook it at Thanksgiving along with turkey because we have a, we like to have a, we like to host a turkey, um, Thanksgiving dinner. So I usually cook at least two turkeys and two big hams. Um, and I'll show you how I do that this coming October. So <laughs> stay tuned. But today I just wanted to, my husband picked one up the other day and the reason why I'm canning, I'm trying to make room in my freezer. And we didn't really have enough room for a big football, well, it's bigger than a football style, picnic ham with the bone in. And um, so I thought, I'll just throw that sucker in the slow cooker and we'll have that. And I'm going to cut all the meat off and put it, spread it out on a few cookie sheets and put it in the oven because we like to have it, we don't like it real slimy or... Um, uh, too juicy we don't want to dry it out don't get me wrong but we just like it a certain texture so we'll do that and I don't let anything go to waste I mean I don't keep the fat cap but I'll keep the bone and I put that in a freezer bag in the um and I will put that in my freezer because whenever I make stocks if I make uh, well the last time no not the last time I made uh, turkey stock over the winter and I had a ham bone in my freezer, so I threw that right in the stock and did it right on my wood stove. And it really adds, you know, I don't have to add any salt to it or anything because, you know, ham is salty anyway. So, um, yeah, use what you, you can. There's so many uses for things. So I'm just peeling up some potatoes. And um, there's so many different ways to make a scallop potato. I'm going to use my mandolin today. I don't always use it, but I just, <laughs> I found it while I was digging around to get my food processor out. I'm like, oh, I'll just cut it up nice and thin. Same with my onions. Uh, if you haven't used a mandolin before, they're a great kitchen accessory. However, they're extremely sharp. It comes with a safeguard. I'll show you what it is, but I don't find mine works very good. It's a pampered chef mandolin and it's sharp, you know, 
it's extremely sharp and it works well it's just uh, what I do is I use my thickest oven mitt to hold whatever I am um, slicing and I'll go fast at first and then I slow down as you know the vegetable or whatever gets you know smaller and smaller because I don't want to slice my fingers it would it would slice it just like butter that's how sharp they are um, so that's what I, I'm gonna do. I usually use my mandolin like in the summer when I'm slicing up pickles or something like that to can. But I just thought today, I feel like doing a whole bunch of potatoes and some onion and doing it nice and thin. And today I'm just gonna throw everything in a pot with the potato cream cheesy sauce that I make, slap it in a casserole dish, and bake it and Bob's your uncle that's what I'm gonna do so and if you're wondering why I'm wearing gloves potatoes make my hands itchy I know I mentioned it in one of my earlier videos but that's one thing I like to wear gloves on the regular anyways when, when I'm prepping food meat and stuff uh, it's just me but potatoes I have to wear gloves I used to wear sandwich bags before I could get my hands on gloves um, for some reason I think it's the starch it makes me extremely itchy, like uncontrollably itchy. So I can eat potatoes. I love potatoes. We grew up eating potatoes with every meal. Um, but I have to wear gloves when I peel them or I'll tear my hands apart. And my hands are my most important tool I have in the kitchen anyways. So yeah, we're going to peel these up. And I won't try to make this video too long but I haven't really had a good sit down chit chat with you guys for some time so I just wanted to fill you in on the goings on it's spring now oh look at that potato these potatoes are oh, I'll see if I can cut that right out there these potatoes um it's a big 50 pound bag for ten dollars down the French shore my uh, good friend of mine picks them up for me every once in a while and we eat potatoes on the regular so it certainly comes in handy because if you're to go buy just a small 10 pound bag of potatoes at a grocery store. You're looking at $5.99, $6.99. It's crazy expensive. You could buy one on sale for $3.99, but that's that's a rare sale. So I get them where I can get them. Um, yeah, and they're perfectly fine. They might be shaped kind of funny. That one's not too bad. There's a couple of funny shaped ones in here, but they're potatoes, for goodness sakes. They're good. Um, that's what, uh, that's what I get. I do the same thing when I, I can at carrots. I buy the big seconds carrots, so they're all funny looking, but they're good carrots. Waste not, want not. Ugly carrots need love too, right guys? So, I just have to say, I'm going to ask you guys, and it's, it's silly. Lately, on YouTube, I have been watching mukbang videos, and I never really was into them before. But there's a couple of people that I've been watching, and they're just chit-chatting like I'm chit-chatting now, only while they're eating a meal. If you guys don't know what a mukbang video is, it's when you're sitting down, or you're watching somebody sit down to eat while they chit-chat with you. So it's almost like you're having company. Anyways, that's my fascination the past few days. Have any of you guys ever watched that? One of my favorites. Oh, I hear the pressure canner coming down from the pressure. One of my favorites. Uh... Well, that I've been watching the past couple of days is Lady T Sensations. I'll put her link down below. But I, I watched one of her, uh, well, I watched a few of her videos. She has two channels. I forget what the other one's called. Yeah, I'll have to look it up. Anyways, when she's eating with her brother and her mother, and there's one that they're laughing their butts off at the end of it, made me laugh and laugh. Anyways, it got me hooked because I like a good laugh. And if you can make me laugh, I'll stick with you. Um, anyways, that's what I've been watching. Any of you guys fans of mukbang videos? I know there's a lot of crazy ones out there. Oh, also, there's, um, I didn't realize, there's ASMR, which is people that are sensitive to noise or use it to help depression or anxiety or anything. They watch people and listen to them eat, but only they're whispering. They just whisper. I don't know if you guys could hear that. Only they're whispering. And they whisper when they talk, but you can hear that they're eating. I know people might think it's strange, but I I watched a couple videos and I kind of enjoyed it, which is crazy because I can't stand listening to people eat. Um, 
in real life. It drives me crazy when I'm around a loud eater. Can't stand it. Oh my goodness. And it's, I, I don't bite anybody's head off, but between you and me, I can't stand it. The smacking and the slurping and the scraping the fork on the teeth. Oh my goodness. That's worse than nails on a chalkboard for me. It really is. So. Anyways, I'm going to pause you for a minute and finish up these potatoes. Or actually, I'll let it go and I'll speed it up now. I just rinsed those potatoes and I just took the corn out of the pressure canner so my kitchen smells like corn <laughs> it's not a bad smell oh my dogs are barking already so if you don't know what a mandolin is this is a mandolin mine comes with a few different blades and it slices things super like thin this is the little guard that I told you I don't find works as good as I want it to it's supposed to hold the vegetable and it'll hold some you can see what this is doing it's slicing the potato really small really small I did I use this when I made sauerkraut when I was doing the little sandwich pickles um whoop, just dropped one but what I find works better is my thick oven mitt. And I know you can buy gloves out there. Again, I need to save my piggy bank. And you can go fast at first. It looks like I'm just rubbing this, but it's pushing the blade down. Um, there. So I'm going to get this sliced up. I'm going to do the onion too. I'll let you guys see that nice and small it takes no time to get vegetables done it's just you need to be careful i would never let a child use this never ever ever because being a grown-up <laughs> it takes a blink of an eye to make a mistake really it does and you do not want your fingertips cut off the skin on your fingertips anyways so let's get this all uh, sliced up see see that beautiful just beautiful and then uh, then we'll move on all right there's all the potatoes and I put three onions in this I know I only showed you one but I put three. Oh, that's one of the onion skins and I'm gonna cover it with water but I I can't stand taking a bite of potato scallop potato and it'd be crunchy so I like my potatoes sliced thin mr. Mays shush so I'm heating up some water and I'm going to cover it with boiling water. I'm not going to cook the potatoes, but that'll start to cook them a little bit and then the water will cool down until it's time to start making supper. Um, so yeah, now I'm going to take that ham out of the slow cooker. All right, time to cheese it up. I'm just trying to get myself together here. Uh, I'm being pulled in all different directions today, but that's life as a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad, I'm sure. So, I just put some margarine in the pot. This isn't so much of a cooking tutorial. I just want to show you what I'm doing. And I'm going to turn it on to start melting. And this is pretty much the base that I use for corn chowder, mac and cheese, um, potato, scallop potato, only, you know, a few different spices depending on what I'm making. So I'll let this start to melt. I'm going to add a little flour to it. I need to get the milk out of the fridge. And, uh, yeah. I don't know where your water is. I think it's up in Mommy's room. Go get your water. Go get your water. It's up beside Mommy's bed. Well, go get your cup, huh? No. 
and I'm just going to use some uh, milk in the fridge. So yeah, no, Mr. Mays, I can tell he's coming down with something, so I'll have to, you know, give him a little extra loving. That's what I'll have to do. So when this starts melting, I know my teenage son, I, he's supposed to have baseball or softball, like the school team after school today, but uh, hopefully he'll remember. And then I'll call my husband to pick him up on the way home from work. He, he works about an hour, a little over an hour away from where we live. So he has a long drive every day. So I'm just going to, I was debating on whether to use my big crock pot or not. We'll see. Because I, I peeled a lot of potatoes. I might have peeled too many, but I'm always scared. I'd rather have too many than not enough when it comes to sides because it's good to have a good amount. Now, if I don't use all the potatoes tonight, I'll just put them in some cold water and put them in the fridge. And I can make uh, almost like hash browns, only with flat discs. I used to get those at a for breakfast when we lived in the city in Halifax. Um, let me show you. Um, we'd go out for breakfast sometimes, and at that point, we only had two children. <laughs> now we have six. But at that point, that was over 10 years ago, we'd go to this little place for breakfast every once in a while. It was on Quimpool Road, Road, and it was called the Spartan. Anyways, whew, it was good. And when they made their potato hash browns, they were in little potato discs with, I don't know if it was parsley or what, but they were delicious. I've never made my hash browns like that, but hey, I'm willing to give it a try. It's amazing how much you guys can see. It. Oh, it's hard to tell. I might have to take you guys off there in a minute. But this is still turned on high. And the flour in there um, absorbs the milk and it just thickens up and thickens up and thickens up. And it's amazing how much milk you can put into a dish. Like this, this I used not even a whole cup. I still have, well, I only used about a half cup. And if you guys can see, I might have to start snapping some photos to insert them. And that's what I'll do right now. Woo! Woo, Nelly! I gotta put some more milk in that. Or that's going to scorch, and we don't want that. Now. Yeah, anyways. So if I don't use all the potatoes tonight, that's what I'll use them for tomorrow. Because i got some bacon in the fridge. And whether I get up bright and early and make a cooked breakfast, we could potentially have breakfast for supper tomorrow. That's always a family favorite. We don't have it that often, but I think I did a, yeah, I did a video on that. And I just make some of my homemade sausage patties, some bacon, and some Spartan-inspired hash browns. So, no, I'm going to get this roux together, and then we'll throw everything all together in a pan and bake it with some cheese on top. All right, guys, I'm going to bring... Uh, oh, I'll just, just wait. wait a second. <laughs> my teenager just got home from school, so... A sure way to get him the heck out of the kitchen is to start filming. Um, <clears throat> he he doesn't like to be on camera, which is okay with me. But like I say, he gets him out of the kitchen. I sprayed these pans. You probably don't have to. I don't know. And there's different ways. People do layers like lasagna. I've done that before today. I'm tired. It's 4 o'clock. Well, 5 to 4. So we usually eat around 5. So we might be a little later tonight. But that's okay. So I'm just going to do this. I strain these. It smells like onion. Mmm, onion. I love onion. Love it, love it. So, there's still a little water there in the bottom. And I'm just going to bring that pot of sauce over and put it on top of this. And then I saved, reserved some of the other cheese put on top of that so yeah I got one baby to sleep upstairs 
the littlest one. Oh, I'm just going to put it all in. And Mr. Mays, he's upstairs with Miss Misha playing right beside the baby's room. So hopefully he'll mind his own business and stay out of there. But as of right now, I need to get supper on the go. And I didn't add any salt or anything to that. I did add uh, some of my turkey uh, bone broth. That doesn't have any salt in it either. So I might put some... Uh, I'm just going to season up the potatoes. So you got to put a little salt and pepper on that. You just got to. So yeah, scalloped potatoes. Uh, I should make it more often because it's good. Oh, oh, my battery's dying. I should make it more often because it's tasty. However, it takes a little more work. It's worth it, but I suppose it's something that you can take to, um, uh, like a potluck or something. I know I wouldn't shy away from a, somebody's scalloped potato, that's for sure. Here's some pepper. I just like to use my fancy pepper grinder, but. So, as of right now, I have 100 subscribers. I had 102 yesterday, but I lost a couple, but that's okay. You win some, you lose some, but... As of right now, I have 100 subscribers. Well, not I, we do. So thank you guys, thank you for subscribing to me. I, I love having a bigger family. I love um, getting to know new people. I love that people actually do email me and I've gotten to know a few new people. Um, some here in Canada, some in the United States and a real great family over in London. How awesome is that? Now I need to stir this up to see how that's going to work. Uh, smells good. Certainly smells wonderful. So I preheated my oven to 375. I've got to sit down, take a load off. Um, to 375 and I'm going to cover this for about 40 minutes and bake it 45 minutes and then I'll take the tin foil off um, and bake it another 15 minutes just to get a nice you know like that brown crust on top you got to have a little color on top for sure but no well this isn't too bad I know we'll have leftovers of scalloped potato but if you if you make a real good scalloped potato, they don't last long. But you can eat this as a side for anything. I just like it with ham. But this will be a nice side. And I won't have to make one tomorrow. If I make that breakfast... No, I'm not going to make that breakfast for supper because I used all my potatoes. Look at that. I was all talk, no action. I could still make breakfast, but nah. I got other meals in the fridge. I got to meat in the fridge. I need to use up. So, ooh, cheesy. This is going to be good, guys. This is going to be good. Tell me, uh, comment down below. Let me know what you have for supper tonight. Or tell me some really great family favorites in your household. What is it something, if you didn't have to make, and you could have exactly how you like it, what is, what is it that you would want to have? Um, one of my favorites is turkey dinner. I love turkey dinner. Pizza's always a good one. There's so many. I, I can't even say. I All I know is we love food. We love food. Um, it brings people together. Um, sometimes it's <laughs> it, it's a cause for, you know, a remedy for boredom, which isn't good because you'll overeat. But um, portion control, that's what it takes, portion control. So, make it rich. Make it cheesy. Just keep in mind portion control, guys. That's what you're going to do. I'll put a little more here. A little more pepper. And then I'm going to bring that cheese over. Oh. And put some on. I was binging on a, a few different potato scallop 
videos. I've made it several times. I, I just like to get out, see if there's any any new ideas out, ideas out there. One person put nutmeg in their sauce, which might be good. Another person put thyme. I didn't do any of that just because um, if my sister-in-law comes over, she doesn't care for thyme. And she's very sensitive to things like that. So I didn't. That's for you, sis. Uh, I'm just over here in the cupboard trying to find some tin foil. And you know it's one of those things that falls in your lap anytime you don't you don't need it. But when you need it, you can't find it. So way back there. Well this is I'm gonna take a picture for you guys because let me just double check again. Well you can see what I'm doing, but um, before I cover it all up with cheese. Let's see here. Okay, let's put some cheese on. Do you guys remember those commercials? Stop cooking with cheese if you want you. It, had, it was in regards to getting your kids to leave home. Stop cooking with cheese. And it was doing it, it was a cheese company, I think Farmer's Milk or something. I forget which one it was. But, uh, it was like a, a spoof kind of commercial. Stop cooking with cheese. It's true. Cheese, cheese is uh, tasty. I'm feeling like I want to put some Parmesan cheese on here too. But cottage cheese. Old, this is old. I think it's old cheddar. Old cheddar. There's a little bit left in the... Although I do like the food processor doing my cheese. A little bit always gets caught right there. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I sneezed, sneezed away from the food, guys, just so you know. I'm not spraying my scalloped potatoes after all that work. So there. Yeah, let me know some of your comfort foods. And uh, if there's something that you want to see me try to make. The only thing I can't make is anything that has to do with fish. I'm allergic to fish and nuts. I can be around nuts, but I can't eat them and touch them. Fish, I can't cook or anything with. It's funny because I live in Nova Scotia and it's a hardcore fishing province, maritime province, and my father was a scallop fisherman Woo! for years and years and years and years and years and years. And my son-in-law, he's a fisherman. So there's an abundance of fish at my fingertips if I wanted some, but I don't because I can't cook it and I can't eat it. So uh, yeah, I'll put these in the oven. I'm gonna clean up my kitchen. I'll bring you back when uh, everything's all said and done. I got, uh, I'll insert a picture here. Of the, the cookie sheet of the ham and stuff. I don't know, I forget now if you see that or not. But yeah, I'm gonna put it all in the oven, 375, 45 minutes, take the tinfoil off, take the ham out, and uh, put the stuff back in for 15 minutes. Minutes to brown up. Sounds good. And I think I'm going to open a can of those peas I just canned up yesterday. So, uh, good to go. Need a little color in this meal, right? Alright, I'm going to take them out of the oven and we'll take a look at them. So they've been in there. I've rotated the pans around a little bit, but I already took the ham out of the oven because I didn't want it to get too dried out or anything. But smells good. So let's take a gander. Whoa. Looks good. 
We're going to have to stick it back in the oven for about 15 minutes just so it browns up. Woo. Yeah, they're pretty soft. <laughs> pretty soft, so we'll put them back in the oven. And uh, I'm going to take a picture of them right now so you guys can get a better look at them. But I'll bring you back when we finally take it out of the oven to serve. Alright guys, um, I'm just packing the kids' lunches for tonight and I'm going to call it an a night, at least for uh, filming and stuff. I got the kitchen pretty well cleaned up. That's just leftover supper still in the containers. Um, Tim foils on them. I'm going to put them away. It's just my husband's not home yet, so I'll fix him a plate and wrap that up for him. But uh, while I had a minute, I really strive to get lunches packed the night before. I'm really bad at it, though, because I hate packing lunches almost as much as I hate grate and cheese, honestly. Uh, I know it's good to pack lunches, of course, um, but... It's just one of those things, it gets on my nerves. But, it's done. So I'll just show you a general rundown of, you know, an everyday kind of lunch. So uh, sometimes I'll make a sandwich, but this is sandwich meat, some um, turkey sliced meat. Uh, in here, I don't have you guys on a tripod or anything, I washed and cut up red pepper. My kids love raw vegetables. Love it. I would put any kind of raw vegetable in here and they would eat it for sure. But I have uh, red pepper, so that's what they're having. Some cut up mozzarella cheese, some goldfish, and that's straight across the board for these guys. And then, um, well, here, they're all, they all pretty much got the same. An applesauce, a juice box, a granola bar. I got Star Wars because they were 50 cents a box clearance, so I'm like, right on. And a little Joe Louie. Um, yeah, I know, it's sugary and it's sweet. Um, I usually pack homemade treats, or I try to pack homemade treats, but um, I have a little stockpile of treats for days I don't feel like, you know, bacon or anything. Um, sometimes I swap out the applesauce for, uh, this is cherry, berry, carrot. Again, 50% off, it was real cheap. Um, easy. I need to start making my own applesauce again because I don't have any more. So anyways, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, it's kind of a strange filming day. I canned up my veggies. Um, I made that supper. And I got a load of laundry going. I have my dishwasher going. Um, my dogs are barking, and I need to medicate. So thanks for joining me today. And uh, tune in tomorrow. I think tomorrow... I don't really, I don't even want to say, I don't know what I'm doing yet. <laughs> I don't want to hold myself accountable. So, but tune in tomorrow. There'll be something posted for sure. So, uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, peace, love, and happiness, guys. Have a safe and wonderful evening.